Now that we have the ship bouncing around arbitrary edges, I want to move on to do some more vector math. We'll use this vector math in lots of places, and so I think it's kind of easier to learn it in 2D with the ship and that sort of thing. What I want to study now is linear interpolation. So say I had one vector like so, I'll call vector A, and then I had another vector like this, vector B, and we've seen before how we can think of vectors as just positions in space, and chances are one of the reasons we'd want to do this in our game is because we can think of the points of these vectors, or the tips of these vectors, as positions. If I look at them as dots instead of vectors, then, then yes, they're definitely positions. And say I want my character, some sort of character in my game, to walk from this position in space to this position in space, like so, which can be represented by another vector. I want them to start here, I want them to walk over here. Well, we can use an operation called LERP, or linear interpolation. We're going to interpolate from the tip of this vector A to the tip of this vector B. We're going to interpolate across it. And the formula for interpolation is pretty straightforward. It's 1 minus alpha times vector A plus alpha times vector b. Now don't think, ah, oh, Jamie, you know, these Greek letters just throw me off. They're just variables. That's all they are. We're just using another alphabet. We use Greek variables, so we sound more professional. We sound more technical. We sound really intelligent when we use Greek letters. Don't let it throw you off. This is scalar multiplication. We've seen taking a scalar in times again. Let's say we had a vector c. Okay, this is the vector c like so, and I'll draw a little vector symbol on top of it to show it's a vector and not just a single number, but instead a vector with multiple numbers, and in this case two numbers that represent a direction and a magnitude. But 3 times c would be 1c, 2c, 3c. Well, same thing here, we're just doing scalar multiplication. Uh, but instead of saying 3, we're going to go from 0 to 1. And 0, if I say we were, we're going to interpolate from 0 to 1. If I'm at point 0, I'm right here on the green vector. If I'm at point 3, which is roughly a third of the way, maybe point 33, roughly a third of the way there would be right here. Point 5 would be right here. Point 75 would be right here, three quarters of the way up our green vector. And then 1 would be all the way at the tip of this other vector. Let me have a tool here. Of course, I always have tools. Let me, I have a tool here. Let me show you this tool that uh, demonstrates linear interpolation. Let me just slide this in without maximizing it. We have two vectors here. We have vector A. This is vector A. And vector B, like so. So vector A. I'll even put a A symbol there. And vector B. Right here, vector B. Like so, and then we have our alpha value here, this 0.35. And let me write down the formula one more time. It's 1 minus alpha times vector A plus alpha times vector B. All right, and our alpha, let's do a simple alpha value. I'm going to take it to 0.25. So 1 minus 0.25 will be 0 0.75 times vector A. And vector A is this blue vector behind the green vector. So 0 0.75 times vector A, here's vector A, is 0.75 up the way, or 3 quarters up the way, up vector A, which is represented by this green vector hiding back here. So this is 0 0.75. Let me make this thinner, 0 0.75 times vector A gives us this green vector. And then 0 0.25, which is our alpha value again, 0 0.25 plus, plus 0 0.25 of vector B. Well, vector B is this big blue vector, and 0 0.25 of that would be roughly about a quarter of it. Okay, there's 0 0.25. 0.25 of that, but if I take this vector here, this this 0.25 of vector B, and I move it, let's move it right here to this green one, 
right? That's what that second green one represents. It's 0.25 of vector B. That gives us this resulting pink vector right here. All right, remember vector addition. This vector plus this vector is the same as taking the tail of this vector and putting it at the tip of that vector. So our resulting vector is this nice pink vector right here. All right, and again, alpha is 0.25. We are roughly 0.25 up the interpolation between vector A and vector B. That's exactly what that is right there. If you want to keep it simple, maybe forget all the vectors for now. And let me just grab this alpha value, which I erased for whatever reason. I'm going to grab this alpha value, and I'm going to slide this slider on up to 1. And watch, we're going from 0 up to 1 on our vector that we are interpolating. Okay, so interpolating, interpolating, moving on up, moving on up, all the way to 1, and we're at the end. Does that make sense? Look, now we're taking 1 of vector B, 1 vector B, but nothing of A. We're at the end. So there you go. That's vector interpolation. Get used to that, because we use that a lot, especially in the computer graphics area. Well, we do it in physics. We're going to use it in our game to actually move another uh, ship around and, and have something interpolate and move around the the screen, but it doesn't matter what vector A and vector B is, I can adjust these all I want to, and the interpolation works just the same. Let's do something, I don't know, something slightly crazy this way, and you can't even see it because it's off the screen. I'll bring it back on, but again, I'm just interpolating between vector A and vector B, and if I think of them as positions, you know, this is one position here at the tip of vector A, another position here at the tip of vector B, then I can interpolate and move move down this line. So we're going to write the LERP function, the linear interpolation function. We're going to unit test it. Then we'll use it in our game to move a character around and have some fun with that.